What's new in CloudBees CI 2.414.3.7? On October 18, 2023, CloudBees CI 2.414.3.7 was released. In this video, we're going to be reviewing the changes in that release. Also on October 18th, Jenkins LTS 2.414.3 was released. On October 24th, I did a video with Mark Wade about what's new in Jenkins LTS 2.414.3. If you would like more details about that release, the link to that video is down in the description. Now, if you've never taken a look at the release notes for CloudBees CI before, let me show you how to get there. We're going to start at docs.cloudbees.com. Under the documentation menu item, we'll go to CloudBees CI, and on the documentation dropdown, we'll select release notes. And now we're on the homepage for the CloudBees CI release notes. Let's scroll down a little bit and take a look at the important section right at the top. If you skip versions when you upgrade, Refer to previous versions of the release notes for any relevant known issues or upgrade notes. Well, what does that mean? Well, the current version is 2.414.3.7. Let's say I was upgrading from an older version that was 2.401.3.3. I would need to go through the known issues and upgrade notes for every release between 3.3 all the way through to 3.7 to make sure that I know of any other steps that I might need to take during that upgrade process. As a CloudBees CI client, we recommend an assisted update to help make the update process easier. There is a link down in the description about how to get help with an assisted update. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the overview for 2.414.3.7. You'll notice that there are two red blocks at the top before we even go to take a look at the detail pages for this release. For this first red block, what we see here is controllers fail to start due to plugins moving from the plugin catalog to the CloudBees Assurance program. With this release, there are four plugins that have been added to the CloudBees Assurance program, or CAP. That's the GitLab API, the GitLab branch source, Pipeline Maven integration, and also Pipeline Maven API. Here's the key point. If your Cask bundle has any of these plugins in the plugin catalog, they must be removed. Otherwise, that bundle is invalid at this point and will not start. Now, also with this release, not only did we add four plugins to CAP, we actually removed one from CAP. And that plugin that was removed was Maven integration or the Maven dash plugin plugin. Now, if this plugin is already installed, it'll continue to be installed. It's not gonna be automatically uninstalled for you. However, if you want to install this plugin through Cask from this release on 2.414.3.7, it must be included in the Cask bundles plugin catalog, and also in the plugin YAML file. The second red box talks about the YAML section in the pod template not being recognized. With the version of the Kubernetes plugin that is included in CloudBCI 2.414.3.7, this version of the plugin has a snake YAML engine update, which implements the YAML spec 1.2.2. Now with this specification, the YAML merge operator was removed. Therefore, if you have any merge operators in your pod definitions, those also have to be removed. So just getting started with this release, two big things to look at. Four new plugins in CloudBees Assurance Program, one removed, and also if you're using pod templates through the Kubernetes plugin, that was updated, and if you're using the merge operator, you're going to need to clean up your pod template definitions. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the release notes for traditional platforms. We'll also go and take a look at anything that's different in the modern cloud platforms, but we're gonna start with traditional and then move over to modern. Now, also for this release, we had a security release. There's a CloudBee security advisory that's included with this. Go take a look at that and understand what the security items were that were in that release. There were also a handful of security fixes. One of these, the Commons HTTP client, is also documented over in the security advisory but then we also have multiple dependencies updated to address other security concerns. Those are listed here at the top. Now let's get down into the new features. For this release, we have added GitLab support in the CloudBees Assurance Program. We were talking about that a few moments ago. Now, GitLab is at the same level of GitHub and Bitbucket as far as receiving necessary updates and security fixes through the CloudBees Assurance Program. Also in this release, bundle update timing has been added to configuration as code or CASC. What you're able to do with this feature is you can automatically reload a new bundle version. The key point here is if a bundle can be hot reloaded, the current restrictions remain. We can also automatically schedule a safe restart after a new bundle is detected. We can skip any new versions that were detected. We can also skip a concrete bundle version so it's never applied. And then also we can reject or accept bundle versions with warnings. Now bundle update timing is on by default. If you don't want that, then you can go ahead and disable it by setting a system property in your start script. 
If you're interested in learning even more about bundle update timing, you can go and look at the documentation, bundle update timing for the operation center or bundle update timing for controllers. Now, when we first started out, we were talking about the new plugins added to CAP. There were four, two for GitLab and two for Pipeline Maven. The reason why those were added to CAP is that the Maven integration plugin was removed from CAP. As an alternative to using Maven integration, Cloudbees recommends using the Pipeline Maven integration plugin. Now, what does this really mean? The Maven integration plugin is the Maven job type when you click on new item. Let's say that you have a lot of Maven job types that you want to go ahead and migrate over to Pipeline. Well, also with this release, Cloudbees has released the Cloudbees Maven Migration Assistant plugin. This plugin will help you migrate your Maven jobs to Pipeline jobs. And then finally, let's go down and take a look at this last big item about Cask. There is now a new bundle report in the Operations Center Cask management page. Well, what is this report about? We have the ability to view a report of all of your controllers and their associated bundles. The report is now available on the Operations Center Cask management page. Or as an admin, you'll be able to search for the controllers as well as search and filter the bundles. Let's go down to feature enhancements. In this case, for traditional platforms, we have three feature enhancements for high availability. And we also have one feature enhancement for Cask. Under resolved issues, we've already talked about the YAML section and pod templates not recognized. The item right below the YAML is when Cloudbees Pipeline Explorer was enabled, some pages were very slow for complex pipelines leading to controller-wide performance issues. So if you've been using the Cloudbees Pipeline Explorer and you've seen this issue, this has now been resolved. There are various other high availability fixes and other miscellaneous fixes included in the resolve section. I'll leave it up to you to go through and check those out to see if any of them apply to your environment. Let's scroll down to the next section, which is known issues. And for traditional, there are no new known issues since the last release. And under upgrade notes, we see the big red section that we've already talked about during the introduction of this video. Now let's go ahead and go back and take a look at the release notes for modern cloud platforms. We have one new feature specific to modern cloud platforms. What we have is the ability to use a bundle retriever for SCM. Well, what is that? The Cask Operations Center Bundle Retriever is a service that ensures Operations Center Cask bundles are always available and updated before the Operations Center starts. This bundle retriever is deployed alongside the Operations Center container and allows you to manage its configuration via source control management and assures that the latest bundle version is always locally available during both initialization and while running. By default, Bundle Retriever uses a polling service to check the SCM by default. But if you're using GitHub, you can reconfigure to use webhooks, eliminating the need for polling. So at the moment, this feature is for modern cloud platforms only. Let's go down into feature enhancements. And for feature enhancements, there are a couple of items that are specific to modern cloud platforms. This first one is include GitHub related header values in the hibernation monitor logs. Why do we need that? Well, now what this allows us to do is report the values of selected headers without personal information that can be correlated with webhook delivery logs inside of GitHub. Also, there are new Windows agent container images for Cloud BCI. Again, specific to modern cloud platform. And then also in the feature enhancements, there are a couple of items that are specific for high availability on modern cloud platforms. If we go down and take a look at the resolve section for modern cloud platforms, we will see a number of other items that are specific to modern cloud platforms. Again, I will leave it up to you to go through and take a look at these items. Now in known issues, there are two new known issues specifically for modern cloud platforms that are associated to Bundle Retriever. Those issues will be fixed in an upcoming version. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.